Hey, how's it going? This is Melinda and welcome to my channel. Today, I want to talk to you about five complaints I hear quite often about my vinyl collection, the way I collect, the hobby in general, the way I treat it. And I'm going to have to come up with a clever title because I want to be clear here. When I say criticism, I mean kind criticism. Most people, and yeah, I do have a few people here and there who slam me on a few things, that's fine. But most of what I'm talking about are from kind, nice viewers that just see things a little differently than me and they challenge me on why I think the way I do. So it's not, I'm not talking about five things I get slammed for and ugly comments. It's done respectfully for the most part. So I'll have to come up with a good title that hopefully lets you know what this video is about. But I, if, if I don't, I'm not able to do that, please know that when I receive these comments, most of the time they are from great viewers who are just curious and want to know why I do things the way I do. So first off, Happy New Year. I hope everyone has a happy and healthy New Year. And let's go ahead and get started. First off, a comment I've been hearing, why in the world do I get rid of original pressings? And one of the comments that really stuck with me that I remember getting was when I showed this particular record recently. This is Phil Collins' Face Value. The Analog Productions music uh, label put this one out uh, with the celebration of Atlantic Records, the music label uh, that put this one out originally. This is a reissue. And, you know, I got this one. I had an original. For me, this sounded better. And Face Value isn't one of those records that I would call a classic original that you have to have. Uh, it was a very popular record. It sold very well. If I ever change my mind on having an original of this record, I can easily go to a record store and find it again. And for my goal with my record collection, I don't have the space uh, to just have 10,000 records in my collection. I don't even know if I want that many. I love people who do, but I like the idea of having an amazing copy that sounds great of a record and being done. Obviously, for me, that's not always the case. It is truly with all of these things I'm talking about, a case-by-case -case basis. In the case of Face Value by Phil Collins, I only need one copy of that record. Why not keep the best sounding? But I hear you on originals because originals are unique and special compared to everything else. There will never be another original. They can make a gazillion reissues, but you cannot duplicate an original. So I understand the originals only crowd. And uh, here's an example of an original I would never dream of getting rid of. No matter how many copies of this record I do have, Abbey Road by the Beatles. I was able this past year to get an original first pressing UK Abbey Road. And thank you to Patrick uh, from the channel PB Thou for selling this to me from his own personal collection. I mean, it's historically special. It's from the uh, country of origin. It is a first pressing of a classic record, Abbey Road. And it also sounds better than any other version I have. So yeah, I understand why some people would question getting rid of originals. For me, it's a case by case basis. And those classics, those special hard to find rare records, no, I'm not going to get rid of these. But a, a record like Face Value or a common first pressing, when there's a better sounding version, I don't mind getting rid of. We can respectfully disagree on this topic and I totally understand those original only people. I get it and I know you have amazing vinyl collections. But for me and because of space, I just can't hang on to every single original. Uh, the second one, this is a complaint I hear a lot. 
Um, and it goes both ways because some of you are totally into this and some of you are so not into this. And I understand. I'm talking about hype stickers. I get a lot of complaints about people saying, why do you not remove hype stickers? Uh, I want to show an example of one that I cherish. And I, I'll be honest with you, I bought this copy of this record because it still had the shrink wrap and the hype sticker on it. I love Van Halen. I personally remember seeing this hype sticker on this record. It brings back nostalgic memories for me. And so I get it. Not every hype sticker is attractive. And we can debate on whether this one is. I personally find it attractive. You may not. There's a lot of reasons why you may or may not want to keep shrink wrap on a record. For the positives, I like some hype stickers, especially if I buy a record that, you know, 40 years later, it still has a hype sticker. It's still in the shrink wrap. I have a hard time removing it once it's been there for that long, but I will remove shrink wrap when it looks like it's uh, damaging the record on the corners. If it's too tight, if it's yellowed through the years or has gotten a little ripped, I will go ahead and take them off. But here is one perfectly intact, a hype sticker in the shrink wrap, no problems. I love that shrink wrap. You know, back in the day, we did not always have those uh, protective covers that we use now, those protective sleeves. I love that shrink wrap kind of protected records in some ways. Look how white and clean and beautiful the stripe is. A lot of times if it didn't have the shrink wrap on it, this white stripe would be very dirty, maybe have some marks on it. Shrink wrap used to be the best protection we had. And I like hype stickers in some areas and in others sometimes they're very obnoxiously ugly and I will remove shrink wrap and sometimes when a gatefold is extremely cool to me I will get rid of shrink wrap but again a case-by-case -case basis I understand in circumstances because I have removed shrink wrap but I also understand the people who cherish the shrink wrap the hype stickers they do detract from the original artwork I will give you that but you know um, it, for me, is a case-by-case -case basis. I understand both sides of it. Uh, let me know in the comments below where you come down on that. I'm curious. Uh, here is another example of a hype sticker. And this is a reissue. This is a more common written new record. And I totally understand. It does kind of take away from this black and white album artwork. I get it. But I like having this hype sticker because it gives so much information about this particular pressing. Someday when I'm gone and my daughter's looking through my collection, she will see this. She will know automatically it was a 2018 limited edition gold vinyl record. You know, just, I just kept it on there. Um, you know, no really rhyme or reason. But I understand that whole complaint. So... Here's another thing that I get a lot, and this is from the people who are older, old school, and I'll admit it, I'm old school because I grew up with the same thoughts that they do. And some people have come to me and said, why do you call records vinyl? They cannot stand that term. And I'll admit it, I grew up in a time when records were just records. And stylus you talk about a stylus that was a needle for me back in the day turntables were known as record players those are those old school terms at least for me i didn't even know when i was growing up that audio files existed so i grew up with needles and record players and yes records and i don't really have a great explanation but i feel like when i talk about vinyl vinyl records it is to distinguish the exact media format I'm talking about. You know, back in the day, we only had records, but now we have cassettes and CDs and streaming. And yet the artists who make these albums, when they're talking about what they made, they will show a CD, but they will say, I made this record. They still, after all of these years, like to talk about making a record album. 
So vinyl is just a way to distinguish what type of record. You know, obviously you can say a CD, but I don't hear artists saying, hey, I made a new CD, a new CD is coming out. Or a new, I've got something I need you to stream, a new streaming, no. They love to say the old term records. So by calling them vinyl, it's specifically mentioning the media format that they're talking about. So I get it. I personally still love to say a record, but I get it. Vinyl is the new word for vinyl records. So uh, yeah, there's a few people who've commented. They want me to champion bringing back the name and the word records instead of vinyl. And I hear you and I'm from that records era. I grew up with vinyl records, not CDs. Of course, I went on and moved on to CDs and cassettes as a teenager and as an adult. But yeah, records. I love the word and the term records, but to be very specific, vinyl records does fit. Let me know how you feel about that too. Uh, another comment I get often, especially when I'm showing my new gear, been buying some stereo equipment, making some massive upgrades. Stereo equipment has become a new interest in my life. A lot of you are like, why are you buying the new stuff? Vintage is so much better. I don't know that I agree with that based on my own experience. I think vintage gear is extremely cool. I love the look. Even my MoFi Source Point Tens have a retro look. They look like those older speakers and I love that about them. So I love the look of retro and vintage gear and you know it's a common debate. Do you go out and buy something brand new or do you buy something vintage? And for me what it boils down to is the vintage gear that I have bought in the past and I'll admit it wasn't top tier gear but everything I bought vintage has needed repairs here and there, and the new stuff hasn't. It's just more convenient for me as a female, as someone who doesn't know how to fix vintage gear or tweak it when it needs tweaked. I like having something new. I don't like having to ask my husband to repair things when it's not his hobby. So, that's why I really probably lean more towards new gear. I find it to be amazing. I have loved everything I have bought. I'm not going to lie though. There is a store in Bowling Green, Kentucky called Melodies and Memories. Their whole second floor is dedicated to selling vintage gear and it is fantastic. I drool over what I see there and they have amazing vintage gear and I love those really cool rooms. They're vintage looking. I love it. So I say live and let live. If you're into the newer stuff, and I tend to be for convenience reasons, and I happen to think they sound wonderful. I'm very pleased with everything I've bought. But if you're one of those vintage people, I get you too. Uh, so I appreciate the comments. I'm probably going to stick with newer gear, but I love the people who are going out and refurbishing uh, the old vintage gear. I just don't have that ability. Uh, I respect you because you do and I respect my husband because he's been able to really do some amazing things with vintage gear. Unfortunately, they just haven't held up as well for me. So that's the reason why I buy new. Uh, another uh, thing that I get a lot of comments about and I'm guilty as charged no doubt about it. Why do you not listen to new music? Why are you always just buying old records? And you know, it's funny because a lot of the music I listen to, I consider new when it probably came out in the 60s, 70s, maybe even the 80s, maybe even the early 90s. You know, up until 2013, I stayed very current on music. My daughter, still lived with us. I'd take her to school. We listened to what she wanted to listen to. And so I know a lot of this stuff up until 2013, what the pop, the top 40 type music was, what was popular uh, back in those days. After 2013, and she sadly left the home, I 
kind of got away from listening to all that stuff. I found, why do I want to listen to something with a little rap in it when I can go back and listen to my Van Halen records, revisit some of the stuff that I quit listening to because my daughter was around and I was letting her own the radio. You know, I'll be honest, I have not really returned to current music. Last night when I was watching um, the uh, Ryan Seacrest Rockin' New Year's Eve, I was lost. I didn't know who they were. I knew the names, I heard a few names, but I didn't really know the music anymore. I'll admit I'm getting a little rusty when it comes to new music. That's a problem. And I don't have to listen to top 40 music, but I do need to expand my horizons on new bands because little by little, these older bands that I know and love, they're gonna quit touring. Uh, some of them have already. Um, there's already been deaths in some of the most amazing bands that I love with all my heart. They're not getting out there and touring ever again. If I want to um, enjoy new music and going to concerts, I'm gonna have to get into these new artists or concert venues are gonna be over for me. So that, yes, I am guilty as charged on that. That is something, I've got a lot of New Year's resolutions. That's probably one I should add to the list. But uh, yeah, that is something that I agree. You can criticize, it's a fair point. So those are five things that I've been hearing from uh, the vinyl community, your responses to my videos and I hear you on those. Um, also, I want to show a few records that I received over the holidays, and I want to share with you my big gift that I received. And my husband and I, we swore we weren't going to exchange with each other this year, but I bought him a bottle of his favorite bourbon. I had the opportunity to do it, so I did it, and he surprised me. So, uh, in the near future, I'm going to go to the Sphere in Las Vegas and see U2. I've never seen U2 in concert. I'm going to go to this amazing venue, the Sphere, my husband and I. That was my big Christmas present. But over the holidays, I did buy a few things for myself as well. Let's talk about it for a minute. Uh, this was from Music Matters. This is my first record I have ever bought from Music Matters. And it's probably just because those came out a little bit before I got into jazz. A lot of the best titles are sold out and aren't coming back. But I love Horse Parlin. I saw this was on their website and I bought it. Uh, you got Tommy Turrentine, Stanley Turrentine, uh, fantastic. And I will say I am absolutely struck by the beautiful quality. These are just like the Tone Poets, maybe even a little nicer. Um, they're a little pricier, but they are 45 RPM. You do get two LPs. And this is an incredible album. Side 4 alone uh, is worth the price of admission of buying this incredible record. And I love all of it, but that Side 4 was, for me, the best. Uh, and I think it sounds absolutely wonderful. This is uh, remastered by Kevin Gray and Steve Hoffman. That's from best I could tell. And I loved it. Now, I will be honest, my husband, when he was listening to it with me, he didn't love the way it was uh, mixed. And that's probably from the original pressing, not any fault of Steve Hoffman or Kevin Gray. But the piano is center and it's soft. And then we've got uh, the saxophone and the trumpet on the sides. And they're louder instruments. So it does have a panning effect that my husband found distracting. But I personally loved the entire sound. I thought, you know, piano in the middle. Yes, it's gentler. The, the side, the right and left, didn't really bother me all that much. Uh, just, I wanted to bring that up because we're two different people hearing the same music at the same time. Uh, on the same equipment, and we came up with a little bit different opinions. So uh, my copy is number 796. I would not hesitate if there is another title that I really would like to have from Music Matters. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, here is another record I picked up very recently from Hard Copies in Bowling Green, Kentucky, in the mall. The United States of America. It is um, a very psychedelic record. And when I was looking at it, uh, the lady working 
that night told me it was actually from her personal collection and she pulled it because uh, some of the guitar playing is so high up it actually hurts her ears a little bit and she didn't enjoy it as much as she thought she would so she put it um, back in the store to be sold uh, I really like this as far as psychedelic music goes it's fantastic I understand what she was saying about this high shrillness of the guitar um, it didn't hurt my ears the way it must have hurt hers but I thought it was really great and this is a 2017 record store day uh, version remastered by Kevin Gray it is a mono copy on clear vinyl I would rather have black um, I like colored vinyl I'm not a big fan of clear vinyl but uh, the price was right it's a record I've been wanting to have in the collection so I've enjoyed it very much and I think the sound quality is very good I imagine an original would be better the sound stage uh, would probably be better but uh, I thought this was good and I'm I'm very happy with it Here's another record that I've received over the holidays. Uh, this is the super vinyl version of the MoFi original master recording of Milestones by Miles Davis. A killer record with an amazing lineup. Of course, we're getting Cannonball Adderley, uh, John Coltrane, Red Garland. I love Red Garland too. Paul Chambers, Philly Joe Jones. Uh, yes, that's right. Miles Davis. I mean, this is a tremendous record and it sounds absolutely phenomenal. The super vinyl formula is dead silent on this. This is a promotional copy that I received. I, it has a mark on it. There's, it's not numbered. So when I get those, I will always share with you that it is a promotional copy that was given to me, but it's absolutely fantastic. And if you don't have this record, this is a perfect way to have it in your collection and uh, when it comes to these miles davis mofis i just have one more left if they repress it i'm gonna buy it and that will complete my collection here's another one i grabbed and i know a lot of people are going to criticize me because i will admit this i bought it from amazon okay but hear me out before you get mad at me hear me out uh, first off look at this ugly hype sticker i get a lot of people this is one of those cases where Someone says, why would you keep a hype sticker on your record? Yes, I get it. It definitely interferes with this artwork. It also has a lot of really cool information if you want to know more about the pressing. But I understand it does interfere with the artwork and it is a gatefold record. Uh, this is Pink Floyd's The Division Bell, a record I haven't had in my collection. You're probably wondering why. Um, it's just not one of my favorite uh, Pink Floyd records, even though I think the sound quality on this is wonderful. My husband especially enjoyed it. And David Gilmour is one of my favorite top five guitar players of all time. So, you know, it was something I've wanted in my collection. But these Pink Floyd MoFi's, or no, I'm not sorry, they're not MoFi's, reissues are expensive. They're usually 40, 50 bucks on Amazon this was $21 for a little window of time and I caught that and bought it so I didn't want to pay $45 to have this but for $21 I'm thrilled because you know there are times when I want to hear those deeper cuts um, the albums that aren't quite as popular you know you can only hear Dark Side of the Moon so many times when you think okay I want to hear something from Pink Floyd but I'm in the mood for something a little more obscure a little different and the Division Bell is one of those. Now, uh, for me personally, I prefer Pink Floyd when Roger Waters and David Gilmour are in it together. They probably would not agree with me, uh, but I like both of them. So, yeah, this is good, but it just doesn't rise to those classic albums for my taste. But I'm glad to have it in the collection. I'm going to continue to play it a lot and maybe it will climb up there for me. It is beautiful. The guitar playing is sensational. The sound quality is amazing. Great piano playing. Uh, I, I do enjoy it very much and my husband loves it. So I imagine it is going to be on the turntable a lot. And for $21, what a steal. So those are the newest records I added to my collection here over the holidays. And again, the comments I hear the most complaints, respectful complaints I hear 
about the way I collect vinyl and my hobby in general. Let me know how you feel about this. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, hit the like button and the notification bell, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.